All right, guys. Big day. Very, very excited. The Razor, we're getting new shoes. Method B-Locks and 32-inch Tensors. All right, so I, I have always wanted to try these wheels and tires. Uh, Method and Tensor have become pretty established in the off-road industry. They're very popular, known to be great products. Uh, I have to thank our guys at Vivid Racing. Uh, you can go to vividracing.com. They carry all this stuff. They're amazing. Uh, they really hooked us up to make this an affordable situation for our, our Razor project. Um, so let's, uh, let's take a look at what we've got here, and we're going we're gonna to mount up some wheels and tires. All right, and be careful not to cut through and scratch anything. So, all right, do not mount unless you got the right tire and wheel. We got the right tire and wheel. Let's see what we got here. A little method sticker, cool. Oh, here we go. Wow. Titanium. These are really cool. And they're the titanium rim. These are 15 by 7s with a 4 by 3 offset. Now, we went with the 4 by 3 offset. A lot of times people run a 6-1, which is stock, or they'll run a 5-2. I wanted the 4-3 because our front end here is... Currently 69 inches with our Extreme Performance Long Travel Kit. It's a plus three kit. And right now it's 69. So with these four by threes, it's going to bump me out to 73, which has given us a really nice wide stance. Um, you know, the Razor feels to me a little more top heavy than the Can-Am did. So I don't want to be scrimping out on the width because the wider it is, the more stable it is and less chance of tipping over. So that is the reason why... I went this route. So these guys are gonna have the black bead lock, rock, ugh, bead lock ring. So, and the tires, these are the 32 by, it's either 10 or 10 and a half, 15s. I like 15s just because there's a much wider tire, cho tire choice when you're looking for tires. And then on top of that, you're also gonna have a little more room for rocks and things to clear out just in case stuff gets up inside there. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to, I'll kind of mock one up and then I'm going to start assembling so you can see what it's going to look like. Okay. So I don't have the valve stem in it yet. I've just got the B lock ring sitting on top here, but I just wanted to give you kind of an idea what this is going to look like. Oh, I'm really happy with it. I think it's going to complement the, the razor really well. Great. So, so because it's B lock, I can mount these at home myself. Um, you just have to kind of work to get the wheel over the, um, the one side of it. And then the rest of it, you're just bolting together. So I'm going to start bolting these guys together and airing them up. And I'll show you a little bit about my process to do that so you can see it. And then we're going to get them mounted on the car. And I'm just, man, I can't wait. I'm dying to see what these wheels and tires look like on this car. Definitely something I've been wanting to do as soon as I got it. So let's, uh, let's get started on this. So I'm going to show you my process of how I mount these bead locks. Again, being a bead lock, you can do this at home. You don't have to take it to a tire shop. So I'll walk you through step-by-step step my process. This is something that I found from watching a video from the guys at Method and Tensor doing this at a trade show. So obviously it seems to be the, the right way to go. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install the valve stem. Now the methods actually come with a valve stem, which is really nice. And then I just picked up a valve stem installation tool from Napa Auto Parts. You can also get these on Amazon. Uh, this just makes the job a lot easier putting it in. The first thing we'll do is we're going to remove the cap and also this metal protective body because this has to be removed to be able to get it inside the wheel. Okay, so I put a towel down. Here's our rim. The towel is just going to keep the rim from getting scratched. There's the hole that the valve stem is going to go through. Here's our valve stem. I put just a little bit of soap around it, just some really cheap dish soap. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to slide this through. And then we come back on the backside and just thread on to where the cap goes. It's gonna be kind of hard to see on camera. We thread on our valve stem puller. I just go all the way. 
You can see it's down inside there. Now all we do is we grab the handle and you're just gonna pull and it pops right in. So it takes a pretty good tug, but now we've got our valve stem in there. So now I'm just gonna remove the valve stem tool. So at this point, we're gonna wanna add the tire to the rim and I'll show you how I go about that. Okay, so at this point, make sure all the packaging is off the rim. There are these little plastic trims that kind of hide from you that are going around the, the uh, edge of the rim. So you wanna make sure you get rid of those guys. We have it laid out on a towel. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our tensor tire. Uh, we're gonna figure out which way we wanna go. I'm gonna have, see if I can show it to you here. I'm gonna have the logo side going up and I'm just gonna set the rim or the tire right over the rim. Now at this point, this is kind of the, the hardest portion of this job, which is to basically get this guy over it. So you're gonna start on one end and kind of get it tucked in a little bit. And now what we're gonna do is take a pry bar. We're gonna go in and we're gonna kind of pry it over and pop it on. Okay, so this might be hard to see, but I'm gonna give, my, give it my best shot. So we have the, the tire tucked up underneath here. This is our pry bar. This is just a Harbor Freight tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start not out on the very end, but I'm going to kind of go a little bit off to the side. And I'm just going to kind of get this up in there. And then you just kind of press. You might have to get on it to keep it in place. Okay, so that's part of it is on. So now I'm going to move over to this side, which is kind of right on the main end. And you got to make sure you get it all the way up on there. There you go. Hold everything down and just kind of work it over. And I might have to reposition it. It might be a bit too aggressive, but I think I got it almost there. goes okay I know that was probably awkward to watch <laughs> all right so now we got the one side we got the bead over the b lock side which again is considerably smaller than what you'd be doing with a non bead like rim so this part makes it doable without a machine okay so at this point all I've done is picked up the wheel and tire and set a bucket one of those like Home Depot style buckets I think it's like a five gallon bucket underneath the wheel uh, this just makes it a little bit higher up the off the ground and easier to work with. At this point, we want to align our logos and our on our tire compared to our wheel. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we want to make sure that this little lip is aligned. Um, it self aligns a bit, but you just want to make sure it's mostly lined up where it's right along the edge here. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to set our bead lock ramp um, over the top of this. We're going to look down and we're going to line it up, try to get it as close as you possibly can, looking straight down through. That looks pretty good. Now what I like to do is I'm going to start with the washers. Now the washers do have an upside and a downside. You want the flat end down and then you want the rounded end up. So I'm just gonna go through and put all these guys in all the way around. Okay, so I have the washers uh, set up all the way around. Now I'm just gonna take my little lug nuts here and I'm gonna drop them in to my little magnetic tray. Now what we're gonna do, this is where it gets a little complicated, which is just making sure we have the right pattern going on. So I like to use the valve stem um, and I like to have that as my, I'm gonna call it my, my baseline. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go here and here, so right across from each other, and then also we're gonna make basically a, a cross, straight across, or a plus sign. Now, we're gonna wanna make sure we use a little anti-seize. Um, it does not take much. It's just a tiny, tiny little dabble of it. There we go. And now we're gonna drop this guy down in here. And this is where you can tell how aligned it is. So there, it kinda lined up a little bit better. You can just adjust it as you need to. And you wanna just kinda of get that getting in there started with your fingers. 
you want to get a good few turns in there to make sure it's not binding up or stripping the threads. There we go. All right, so there's one. Now we're going to do the exact same thing on the opposite side. So I added my anti-seize. I'm looking down here and I'm kind of lining it up. Again, you might have to shift things a little to get it to go just the way you want. There we go. So we got a couple turns in. Now we are gonna do the same thing on the sides. You can kind of feel back in here, make sure the lip is right on that edge so it seats. Now all I'm gonna do is we use a half inch socket. I'm gonna use an impact. Um, this impact is not super strong, so it's not going to take them down too far. Um, we're gonna use a proper torque wrench to do that. But what we're gonna do now is just start bringing these guys down. So you're just gonna kinda go across so we've got this guy down now. So now all we have to do is go through and add all the bolts with the anti-seize. So again, a little bit of anti-seize. And then I just start working my way around the line. And you're only going to need to do, like I said, just a couple turns just to get them in there. Okay, so now we have all of our bolts in. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this like crisscross pattern to be able to do it. The way I figured out how to do it easy for me is again, here's my stem, This, these guys here. So this one, this one, this one, this one, I call them number one. And basically all we're gonna do is we're gonna work our way around um, clockwise. So let me show you. So we're gonna tighten number one on the top. Oh. Number one on the bottom. Number one on the side. And then number one on this side. Now we go to what I call number two. So number two on the top, and then straight across from that is number two. Again, just one over. Number two, same thing, working our way clockwise here. Two, and then clockwise, two. So we're going to keep doing this all the way around. So one, two, three, three, one, two, three, three, one, two, three, three, one, two, three. So you get the idea. So I'm going to work my way all the way around. That way all these, now they're all just going to be torqued down only with the torque wrench. We're going to have to go back and torque these properly with, uh, I'm sorry, with an impact, but with the torque wrench, we're going to do it properly. I have this setting set pretty low, so it won't take them down too far. And you'll see that as I go to torque them, that I will need to tighten them up a bit before we even hit the torque. Okay, so like you saw there, we used the torque wrench. We walked through and finished them off. Now we're gonna use the same sequence with, again, the valve stem being number one. Now this is a little more difficult because they're all gonna look the same before you could kind of cheat because they were sitting up a little higher. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna torque these. You wanna find the torque spec on the Method website. Um, this is a cast wheel and I'm using anti-seize. So I think they say it's like between 17 and 20. I think I'm set at like 18 or 19. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna start with number one and you can see it's gotta go a little ways. The torque wrench didn't too much because as we go around, it compresses everything. There we go. So now we're going to the opposite again, straight across. You're gonna have to kind of hold the wheel there we go. So now we're going over here. So again, doing that cross first. Okay, straight across again. There we go. Now, so number one, now we're gonna go to number two. And again, we're just working ourselves clockwise. So again, clockwise from the very bottom one here. This is the number two at the bottom, all right? That's what I like to call it. So again, one, two. So here's number two over here. You can see it's pretty loose because again, the impact doesn't overly tighten it. 
There we go. Straight across from here is this guy. So now we're going up here. You can see, just to double check, you could always pull on that one to make sure. So there we go. So now we're gonna go to three. So one, two, three. All right, so I'm just gonna continue to work that all the way around. Okay, so this is gonna look a bit awkward, but I'm gonna basically put my weight around the tire to help put pressure, and I'm just gonna use this little filler guy to slam air right up inside that open valve stem, and then we should hear it pop. It doesn't always really pop, but we'll see what happens. Okay, so that one, the pop was just, you couldn't even really hear it, it was so quiet. But you'll notice that once the tire starts pressuring up really good and it's staying really firm, uh, it is seated. And you could also just flip it over and look on the other side. And if we flip it over, I don't know how well you can see this, but it's seated all the way around, which is great. So now what I like to do is I just wanna air the tire up to about 30 or 20 to 30 PSI, just to make sure there's plenty of pressure. And I let them sit like that so everything's seating in really good. Some guys even go to 40, and then I'll take the air pressure back down once I mount them on the car. Okay, so we got our PSI up. Now what we're gonna do is just slide the protective sleeve back over the stem, put on our stem cap. By the way, these little stem sleeves can fall off, so make sure when you're taking the cap off, you're aware, especially if you're out in the desert and you're trying to air up or air down, uh, you want to make sure you keep that on there so it does protect the stem. All right, so that's it. That knocks out this tire and wheel. So we now have just one more for me to do, which I'll do off camera. And then we are going to throw these bad boys on the car. Take a look. All right, guys, so that's gonna wrap up our tire installation. Super happy with the way it came out. The car looks so much more aggressive. Uh, definitely excited to try it out. And uh, please like and subscribe as we're gonna be doing, this is the tip of the iceberg. We got a ton of stuff we're doing to this car. I'm really excited to see what it's gonna evolve into. And I hope you guys come along for the ride. So uh, that's it, next video coming soon.